Hello and welcome everyone. This is Brad from Light Architect. This is the third Light Architect for Blender tutorial that will help you get started in creating industry level lighting and camera setups inside of Blender 3D. In this video, we'll be going over how to import 3D environments from third party sites such as Sketchfab. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to work inside that environment with the Light Architect plugin. Let's get started. One of the sites that I recommend you get your environments from is sketchfab.com. They have a variety of 3D environments that you can download. Using Sketchfab is very simple. You simply can search for whatever you're looking for at the top here. And I recommend clicking the downloadable category here so that whatever you search for, you know you can download. Uh, it's important to note that Blender accepts a variety of file formats. You can see which file formats Blender supports by going over to File and Import. And it will show you a list of the file types that you can import. Just to show you what Sketchfab offers, I've done a few basic search results here. I've typed in castle, and as you can see, we have several castle environments here. Some here are much bigger environments or very detailed, while some are just little pieces of castles. I have another search result here. It's called spa and resort. This is by Hailtip, and as you can see here, you can even use commercially. Here we have an awesome abandoned warehouse, which might be kind of cool to do some lighting setups inside. This one's a little bit low poly, but it's a very big environment, so if you wanted to do some kind of wide shot and experiment with how you would light with very big units, for example, down by the train tracks here, then you might try something like this. And this is by J. King. This scan in particular is a pretty awesome uh, castle scan um, by Spagna, but uh, pretty awesome scans that you can import into Blender and uh, get started in lighting a virtual environment. Today we're going to be using this scan Varignana New. It's by Adelmo and it's uh, commercial use it's allowed. Um, as you can see here there are two little tabs here. Before you download it I recommend you look at model information and check to see if the source format will work inside of Blender. OBJ works inside of Blender so it should be fine. So let's go ahead and download the model right here. And then we can just go to keep the original format as OBJ and that's going to download into our download folder or wherever you save it on Windows. Just go ahead and save it. So here we have our download from Sketchpad. Let's go ahead and unzip it. So open or unzip for Windows. And let's see what's inside here. So if you go to source, we have another zip file. So we probably want to unzip that too. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the file type that it said it originally was. So remember, as we saw on the model information section, it's a .obj, so we're looking for that .obj file. So it's probably in here, and yes it is. So very 3 d .obj. And then we also have our texture here. So you're looking for two things when you download these files. You're looking for the source file that was listed on the website, and then you're looking for a texture, which will come in some kind of image file. And as you can see, if you click on this, you'll see it's some kind of texture that will fit the 3D model. So now that we've downloaded our environment from Sketchfab and we found our two source files, the 3D model and the texture, we're going to open up Blender and import that environment. So let's go to File, Import, and remember that our model was a .obj, so we go here to .obj, and now we just have to find that folder with our .obj file. So we'll go to Downloads, and then here it is, Source, then we have a .obj file, and then import. It'll take a minute, but then once it's finished thinking, you'll have your 3D model inside your scene. And as you can see here, we have our 3D model. Let's do a few things so we're not it's not under the grid here. Let's just right-click on the 3D model, press G, and then Z, so that we can move it up above the grid. And then it looks a little sideways here, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and rotate that to be level. So let's go to view and then right. While you have the model selected, let's press R and then Z. And then we'll just rotate it so it's nice and level here. And then we can also drag it up by these little arrows. Anyway, let's go ahead and make sure that this model is textured. So if we go here, down here to this button right here, we can view the model in different forms. Right now we're viewing it in solid mode, but if we want to see the texture on it, we can go to texture. And as you can see, uh, without us having to link the texture, it actually linked it for us. And you can also go to material view, which is one of the best ways to work because you can see your texture and materials at the same time. 
Now, fortunately, the model that we downloaded linked to its texture already, but I want to show you guys how to link your texture if the model doesn't come automatically linked to it. If you go to material mode with your 3D model and all you see is something like this, I'm going to show you how to link the texture that you downloaded to the model. What you're going to do is you're going to select your model, make sure your 3D environment is selected, and then you're going to go over to this tab here. It's called materials. You're going to click on that. You're going to go to new material and go ahead and keep it as a diffuse material and go to this uh, button beside color and then press image texture. And you're going to go to open and then again you're going to find that image file that we found with our download. So if we go to downloads, we go to Varignana new, then you're going to have to find the texture file that was downloaded. So here they've labeled it nicely for us. So we'll go to textures and then Vari 3D JPEG and then open. Then as you can see, we've linked the texture of our 3D model to the 3D model itself. And now we can get to work in lighting our environment. Before I go, I want to show you how to bring in third party people into your scene. Uh, while I do have the bonus people download on the Light Architect website, if you want some more specific 3D models or more detailed models, then I do recommend going to renderpeople.com. They have a variety of 3D people for sale and for free as well. The process of bringing a 3D person from Render People is very similar to downloading your environment from sketchfab.com, but I'm going to show you anyway just so there's no confusion. So I'm just going to go ahead and download one of the free 3D people that they have. So I'm going to go to the website and then click on free 3D people. As you can see here, we have a variety of free 3D people we can download. They even have one animated for us, which is kind of cool. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to go with the second one here, Maypose001. They have a variety of download options for us here at the bottom. When I'm working inside of an environment that I've already created, I like to import an OBJ file and the 3ds max download that they have on their site usually has an obj file within it for the sake of this tutorial we're going to go ahead and click on 3ds max it's going to ask us to save it press ok so let's go ahead and go to our downloads where we have the zip file just like we had for our 3d environment for our 3d person it's also a zip file go ahead and open it right click open now we have our folder here as you can see, it might be a little confusing at first, but we're really looking for the OBJ file and we're looking for the texture. As we can see here, these are all 3ds Max files, so we're not going to use those. We're actually going to use this one right here, posed 0130k OBJ, and there's also one here, uh, posed 100k. So this is actually just a more detailed model, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be using the 30k OBJ. So we have one 3D model here. And then under this texture folder, they give you a variety of different maps here. We're not going to be going into adding specular maps or normal maps to the characters. We're just going to be using the diffuse texture. So just make sure you know where your diffuse.jpg or .png, whichever it comes in, and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and open up Blender. Actually, we're still in our scene here that we did previously. So we're going to go ahead and go to, to File, Import, OBJ. Now go ahead and navigate to your downloads folder. And as you can see, since we selected OBJ, it's only showing us our two OBJ files. You can select either of these. If you have a fast computer, you can go with the 100K one. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to go to 30K. And just go ahead and import that object. And as you can see, she's imported into the scene, but she's a little bit big. So as she's selected, press S and scale her down. And let's press G and then X. We'll bring her forward here okay and then press s scale her down some more and actually we're going to bring her into the to the front of the building here so um, press g and then y we can drag her this way and then g and then x and then we'll put her in the front here somewhere and then rotate with r press r and then z and we'll rotate her around like this and then let's just press G and Z to bring her up. So now let's go ahead and link her texture. So as you can see, if we go to material right now, everything has material except her. So let's go ahead and import her texture. 
So just again, we're going to go to her materials tab, press new, we're going to keep it on diffuse, and then just follow that same process we did when we were adding the environment texture. So just go here to image texture, then open. We're going to find that texture that we saw in the download. So go to download and texture, and then look for that diff JPEG. Let's go ahead and select this one here and open. And as you can see, we have a texture for her here. And if we go into render view, we have a rendered version of the scene. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys next time.